Hi and welcome. In this video, we will try to understand parasitic extraction and back annotation in VLSI physical design. So without wasting time, let's get started. So what is parasitic extraction? Parasitic extraction is done in order to create a more accurate and realistic analog model of the final circuit or final layout that we have. So this is done so that the STA or simulation can emulate the actual design and analog circuit responses so that they can have better timing uh, analysis basically it's not only used for timing analysis it is used for power analysis and multiple other things we will uh, see those things but why this accurate model is needed is what we have to understand if we don't have this accurate model we will end up with inaccurate sta analysis which means which means whatever the timing analysis which we are going to do will not have proper and right values with which uh, we will end up saying, okay, my timing has met, but actually when it is manufactured, it is not going to work. Also, we will not be able to analyze the crosstalk analysis, which can lead to huge problems in modern uh, technology nodes and also the capacitive loading. The capacitance will not be accurate without the parasitic extraction and also the inductive coupling can happen in certain uh, designs it's not applicable to all so parasitic extraction is mainly used for timing analysis as i said because the delay is uh, mainly used and taken for timing analysis and also power analysis the resistance and capacitances are highly used for power analysis to see how much power drop happens and all in the circuitry and how much heat uh, gets generated as well also, it is used for signal integrity analysis where crosstalk and noise will be uh, completely characterized uh, and uh, simulated and its effect uh, will be uh, understood. Also, if uh, there is a circuit simulation which we are going to do, um, it is used for that as well. But uh, ASIC designs, the huge designs will not go through uh, simulations as such. Only small, small uh, pieces of design may go through circuit simulations or some other FPGA based designs may go through circuit simulation. So these could significantly impact the circuit to fail in functionality and timing uh, or performance if we don't use uh, proper accurate and realistic analog model of the final layout. So that is the reason why extraction is absolutely needed uh, in the VLSI physical design flow. We will understand some of the uh, extraction basics now. First of all, there are different types of parasitics uh, available. There are three types, basically. Uh, these types are listed by uh, the tools itself. The tools will categorize uh, that there are three types of parasitics that I have to extract like that okay so first of all it will extract uh, these three uh, types are extracted differently because they will have different characteristics they will have different models uh, i'll tell you why first of all the front end of the line uh, parasitics which are parasitics associated with the semiconductor devices or transistors it need not be always transistors because in dram we will have capacitors and other devices as well so uh, these uh, uh, capacitances or resistances are uh, completely different because there will be multiple different kinds of layer the diffusion the uh, oxide layer the n well the poly and many other things so these are extracted differently and the middle end of the line uh, that is basically the parasitics which are uh, associated with the contacts the contacts uh, can be sometimes categorized into the back end of the line which are interconnects but it is not always because the contacts are usually in the modern technology nodes are uh, extremely uh, having stringent rules and its uh, resistances are high so what what they do is during manufacturing they have used different types of materials not only the uh, materials that are copper or aluminum which they used to do in uh, previous technology nodes but they have changed it into uh, some other um, uh, materials such as tungsten plugs and uh, uh, wolfram and many other uh, different types of uh, materials due to which uh, its uh, parasitic extraction has to happen in a different way 
also i have uh, a video on mid end of the line uh, if you are interested on more of these contact related things you can watch that video the third one is basically the back end of the line uh, the parasitics associated with the interconnect layers which are actually metal layers uh, are extracted in this uh, back end of the line type of parasitics. So uh, there could be some different ways of configuration that extraction can run in. Sometimes uh, for inaccurate extraction, let's say I don't have complete routing done, okay, or I don't have any uh, dummy fill uh, in my uh, designs, something like that. So uh, only capacitance can be extracted uh, when uh, my routing is not done, something like that. Uh, that is depending on uh, understanding, okay. Uh, this there are uh, there is a driver and it has 10 receivers so we can calculate okay these many the input capacitances of uh, 10 receivers can be added up and um, maybe we can say okay the output load of this cap, uh, this driver is this much okay so capacitance can be extracted and all uh, i mean standalone also we can do r plus c uh, extraction uh, which is uh, normal extraction but we can also go with the accurate extraction which is r plus c plus cc which is resistance capacitance and coupling capacitance coupling capacitance basically comes from the crosstalk which is which used to happen like uh, uh, which basically will be accurate when we have our uh, dummy fill the dummy metal and oxide fill uh, in our uh, design okay so these are the three types in which we can run extraction so input for the extraction are basically the technology specifications such as uh, this should include what is the unit capacitance value and unit um, resistance value in our design basically so this will come from the foundry uh, this is used for the uh, for rule based extraction we will see that uh, what it is later but uh, this is the input file which is required the tlup the table lookup file will be used or the technology file uh, can also be used uh, and our design which can be represented in terms of db or uh, in a, any other formats or layout uh, 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 file the same thing is uh, in terms of oasis oasis is a you know compressed form of gds but it, it is used highly in the uh, design and we also need netlist uh, netlist in, in the sense it's some some cases we want to check whether everything is uh, fine whether L lvs is clean so in order to check that we may need uh, netlist as well so there are two types of extractions basically which uh, a tool can uh, do tarrc is used uh, as a main tool for extraction and it is a trusted one so this will support two types of uh, extraction one is rule based this is highly used because the extraction engine uses lookup tables to calculate r and c values what do we mean by that let's say there is a piece of metal of uh, some length okay so for unit length we know what is the capacitance or resistance we will calculate the uh, resistance or capacitance for that length that's all that's the way how we do it for that to happen we need a file called tlup so this file has to be uh, given to the uh, tool so this is basically usually called a 2d or 2.5d extraction and it always supports the full chip extraction and it's a uh, comparatively very fast extraction uh, compared to the this this technique basically so in this technique the process specifications will be given to the model where calibration will happen so over that uh, to the rule based uh, parasitic extraction the design layout will be given also the extraction rules uh, will be given what is the unit capacitance and uh, uh, resistance all those things will be fed into this thing so based on the design and this it will uh, calculate uh, the output so this uh, file will be uh, usually the spef file it can be uh, other type uh, as well the spef is basically standard parasitic extraction format file will which will contain all the uh, capacitance and resistance values of the nets and the devices okay and the second method is basically the uh, field solver uh, based method so in this method in this type of uh, extraction the extraction engine solves the maxwell's equations uh, to calculate parasitic resistance capacitance or inductance if it is needed so be, this is because it's extremely accurate in nature this will actually uh, consider it as electric field all the uh, fringe fields will be considered uh, considered over here it will solve uh, the maxwell equations which are extremely accurate you know that uh, we are using some um, 
assumptions in our actual circuitry but those assumptions will not be uh, done here uh, it will consider some of the uh, uh, advanced techniques such as uh, finite uh, element algorithm or random walk algorithm finite element algorithm is a general numerical method for uh, solving partial differential equations uh, in two or three uh, space variables or when we give the boundary values problems uh, those things will be calculated over here uh, this is much much accurate compared to uh, uh, random walk algorithm and this will take a lot of time compared to this random walk algorithm and it will be a little faster than that of the uh, finite element algorithm this is a, stat a statistical method basically it uses stochastic processes to calculate to model the real uh, circuit so this method is actually highly accurate uh, and slow so uh, in that case that's the reason why it, it is not used for uh, full chip extraction because it will take huge time uh, to do extraction last thing that we are going to see is how to ensure the good ca good quality uh, of extraction one is that there should not be no uh, any uh, lvs mismatch uh, such as name mismatches of cells or nets or something like that or cells or nets missing in our design itself in our uh, netlist itself there could be some uh, you know uh, nets or cells missing that could also happen sometimes so we we should not we should be uh, taking care of that so the second one is there should not be any open there should not be any nets um, not routed in in that case uh, we will not have good extraction result and there should not be any short with any any short of one net with another net also for accurate extraction that requires coupling capacitance the dummy uh, fill uh, should be used both the cell fill and x uh, oxide fill sh should be there uh, in our design with these uh, we can calculate exact uh, coupling capacitance values also we have to use proper settings uh, that uh, we need from the extraction engine depending on the accuracy that is needed sometimes we may not need that accurate value uh, because we don't have the fill in our design right for that we need to uh, tune the de uh, device sorry de uh, the engine properly in order to get proper extraction result so this is basically about extraction we will try to understand what is back annotation now in one of my STA videos, I have told that the timing analysis is carried out at different stages uh, of the chip design cycle, and it is carried uh, carried out with different accuracies. Okay, for the first time, when RTL designers provides the netlist, uh, the synthesis is carried out basically. So, the post synthesis, what happens uh, before physical design? The uh, the synthesis engineer he will uh, carry out the STA. Uh, which is not that accurate sta but he will uh, carry out sta basically in order to verify the timing but delays for this sta or um, simulation basically comes from the library in library there will be a uh, delay specified for the cells this is basically called uh, zero wire load model because so the delay will not consider the output load or input slew variations so because the cell may be in different conditions it may have different types of fan outs and it may have different slew inputs uh, coming into picture so the surrounding the environment of the cell is not known so the accurate uh, the the cell delay is not at all accurate that is number one and the second one is uh, it doesn't have any net delay information uh, during this sta calculation so it's absolutely inaccurate uh, at that level but uh, initially it is carried out the output of the parasitic extraction is actually spec file as i uh, mentioned before it will contain the uh, resistance and capacitance of the devices and also uh, the nets so what happens is since we have the accurate values after extraction we somehow want to uh, add this to uh, our simulation or our uh, sta so that is basically uh, sta tools read the verilog netlist uh, of the design and corresponding spec file to annotate parasitic values of the uh, to the nets and the cells so this annotation is basically called back annotation because actually there were values initially which were put by the tool but that those values are not accurate once the uh, proper extraction is done we will back annotate the values to accurate values that is the reason why it is called as back annotation i hope you got some idea about both 
extraction and uh, back annotation. I haven't been uh, uh, very uh, deep into extraction uh, algorithms as such. If you need, I can make a video on that as well. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye-bye.